Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming by. This is Chris, and uh, I just appreciate everybody coming by and uh, joining along with us all here. We're painting, uh, we're drawing, we're having a lot of uh, fun. We're doing a lot of exciting things here. And, um, of course, uh, we did this uh, beautiful composition here. And this is the finished uh, painting. We have uh, a figure uh, in a park-like setting with a, a beautiful white fence, some flowers, some bushes, uh, a light post, uh, like a lamp, you know, a beautiful lamp park, you know, like those parks have those beautiful lamps, gas lamp and so forth. So we have a lot of um, interesting subject matter here in one small uh, space. And uh, we, we did it in a vignette style, which is, you know, basically just creating a subject matter and then just, you know, feathering out the edges and maybe not having a definite border around it just uh, having a loose feel around the, the subject matter, a, a soft feel. And uh, we also uh, thought about putting a, a mat over the top and framing it. So you can do a vignette style composition and painting like this, and then you can try different mats on your paintings. If you do a painting like this, you can try different mats, and then you, know, you can take a mat, a mat and place it over your painting and then you know, shift it around and see if you like different looks like that, maybe. That might feel a little bit better composition-wise. You feel like you can maybe go around and, and uh, meet up with this person and have a chat. Um, you know, here it's kind of looking like the figure is blocked from us. And we, so, um, not really so much blocked. You can still walk around the fence, but this gives you a little more feeling of uh, being able to, you know, uh, move around in the painting, so to speak. And uh, so that's uh, some interesting things. And you can uh, make even a larger mat than this. I'm trying to see what I have here for mats. And I have we have something like this we can. So I'm just taking another mat out here. This is bl this is blue. That I'm not too fond of that, but um, it's a nice color. I really enjoy blue a lot, but for for a mat, it's a little bit overpowering. But this is somewhat of the vignette style. So you would the mat would be the window of the mat is larger, and you're kind of vignetting this. And you can even do it larger than that. You can make. Um, or you can use a mat even larger than this one, the window. But that's about, that, that looks pretty good. And you can, you know, uh, we, can, we can feather this edge better and soften this out a little more. This is just a composition of what we're doing. But I thought this is good. It's kind of a fun thing to practice too, doing a nice figure with a hat, pretty simple. Um, you know, it's the figures behind the fence, so you don't have to do as much. Um, I try to do this a lot with my paintings. I try to hide the figures behind things, it makes it easier. So I'm just doing maybe like a, like a upper uh, shoulders and head instead of having to do the whole figure. This makes it easier to do a couple figures, fun and easy. All right. So I hope you try this. And of course, uh, we're going to get right into the painting now. Um, and we have this up on the, uh, first part of the video so you can see the finished painting and uh, I'll zoom in a little more and I can even zoom in on the figure a little more like that and 
and we can zoom them back out. Okay, have fun, and we'll see you on the next part. Okay, we just saw the finished painting, so I just want to um, go through the steps of what I did here to really just get a, um, uh, this painting done. And it's, you know, a nice composition. Um, it's a vignette. Um, I thought to myself, it, it, it works as a painting beautifully. Um, uh, it can be beautifully set into a, you know, mat in a frame would look great that way or it can be just a practice composition so that's up to you so what I first did is I started out and I just thought to myself alright let me have some ideas here maybe I thought of a, I'm a pick a fence maybe pick a fence and then some uh, some flower beds here Like so, maybe a flower bed here with some bushes and, and weeds here, and then some flowers. Yeah, some nice flower shapes here. Maybe some flower shapes here and there up here. And then I thought of uh, back here, maybe a nice, uh, maybe a, a lamp, a light. Like that. And then, you know, some blue wash for the sky. So I thought of something like that, you know, for a vignette. And I thought that might look good. Um, and I think this will work. I think maybe if I, of course, we're looking at the, we did see the finished painting. So you'll, I'm actually doing this first before I even start that finished painting we just looked at. So. You know, maybe we can do this, have the have the fence to one side and then have more of a a feeling of openness on, on this side of the vignette. Something like that with the light post. And uh, you know we can set the light post to the side over here maybe a little more. So we can make it a little more interesting that way. Instead of having it centered, maybe have it uh, on the golden mean. So we will do this uh, in just a minute. Let's get uh, some watercolor paper. So let me get my watercolor paper set up here and we'll come right back. But um, another great thing is, you know, sketching out ideas always works great before, if you're going to create a painting from uh, like your creative uh, nature. If you like to be very creative, some people like to just always use, uh, you know, be outdoors painting or paint from photographs or pictures from workbooks and things like that. I'm more or less that way. But once in a while I do like to do some improvisation, some creative ideas where I just come up with a nice idea of something like this, like, you know, and, and, and create something like a small painting, a small composition. Um, I think it's good to be able to do both, especially this is very helpful if you can create your own ideas. Um, just off the top of your head um, with your imagination. That's great because sometimes if you're out there painting in the field or if you're even working from books or photographs um, and so forth, um, sometimes you want to change around a painting and make something a little different. And that really comes in handy because then you'll be able to say to yourself, ah, yeah, I just remember I, I can move something over this way or that way. That won't be a problem. Or let me remove some of the, there's too many details in this photograph. Let me remove some of the details. And then you think back of a time when you did that, when you were doing a, a composition like this and making it more simple, doing like a vignette or, or something like that. So uh, it's always great to practice um, just doing creative uh, exercises and compositions uh, from your imagination or your ideas or a few different, you know, pulling ideas from a few different things. Maybe you have a photograph, maybe you have something that you know of that you recall you want to add in there. And then maybe there's also like a book. So you can take like two or three different sources pull that information together and, and create something um, that's really helpful to do. All right, so we will be back in just a second. Okay, so now we're sort of underway here. I started out um, doing the fence here. Uh, I figured I didn't really need to like go through every single 
a bit of the information here that uh, we're, we're doing with the drawing. It's kind of a simple drawing. So I, I thought I would just kind of describe how we did this. So basically, um, I came. we came up with that sketch like we showed for our basic idea. And <clears throat> then when I went to draw my fence, uh, you know, I just basically, I used a scale like this, or, or you can use a scale like this if you want to. And you can draw in your slats and space them out as you go. So you can say, okay, here's two, space, space, and you can make you can make marks. So that would be a, a space, a fence. You can actually make a, a, a gauge for yourself, like maybe two or three. And you can just start out like that so that you keep them the same size. You can do that. Actually, it would be this way here. So it would be uh, slat, space, slat, space, slide it over. And then you can kind of scale your, your fence uh, slats. They don't have to be perfect by any means, but they should be straight somewhat. The tops should be level. You know, you can make them a little bit rolling if you want. You can roll them. Uh, fences tend to be, you know, irregular at times. So you can create as much irregular, you know, irregularity as you would like uh, when you draw your fence. So I kept mine pretty level on top. And then uh, I put my backers, backing boards behind the fence, which makes the fence stay together and give it its structure. And I just made sure that I did those every other. So you're always wanting to keep that clear white fence slat uh, clear and then every other you're putting in your backer board. So that takes a little bit of time. You can do one at a time and just say one, skip over, one, skip over that one, another one, and you just go right down the line and that, and that should be fine. And we did another one down here. Skip the slat, line, skip the slat, line, and you just go right down and then we put our, just did a little bit of uh, uh, bushes and uh, some wispy grasp here. And uh, we'll put our flowers in here, some flowers. And um, there's a little bit of, um, we'll put a little bit of weeds and things behind this too with our square brush. And we should have uh, an easy time getting that good. Uh, we can also uh, we can make our light post. I would make it either on this side, the light post on this side of the fence, or this side. I wouldn't put it right in the center. I think it looks better off center on the golden mean. So that's about half and then another quarter. And then we can even use our paper and just make a line for our light. That's our light. Just making a simple top. And this is the shadow side and the light sides over here where the light is coming from this direction. So we have a light. A 
light post fence, some flowers. And I think that's good. And that's just a fun little exercise. Let's, uh, let's take a break now that we've kind of started this. We have um, our vignette here and we'll just we'll uh, get started with our painting just in a, in a second or two. Okay, we're ready to uh, start to paint. Let's get some paints on the palette. Sap green and olive green. A little bit of uh, cerulean blue. I'm using a square brush now. And a little bit of yellow ochre. And this square brush is uh, synthetic. This is a, a Blix half inch studio synthetic. It's got a really nice uh, sharp uh, feel to it. And it's a good size for this painting. It's not too, it's just the right size here. You can see that I can kind of do some backing color here. Um, we can add some raw umber. And square brushes do do wonders with uh, like f flowers and leaves and brush and twigs and foliage. And I'll do a little bit of splashing. And the square brush is fine too for splashing. You can get some perfect splashing effects. And I'll add in some cadmium lemon yellow just to brighten things up. I think with greens I find it's really, uh, if you can get a lot of variety with your greens, like if you're painting greens, you notice that I use cadmium lemon yellow, raw umber, and then I use my darker greens here, uh, sap green and uh, olive green, and then also some yellow ochre. So if you can get, a, if you can mix a lot of, uh, if you, give, if you have a lot of variety in your greens, they're going to look good. And you can see I'm splashing quite a bit. That's got a good feel to it. And I might take my round brush and just uh, soften out. Since we're doing a vignette, I'm just going to soften out that. Just uh, I find that looks pretty good. With a little bit of blue. A little bit of purple. And 
and I'll put some of that purple also and blue, cerulean blue, in the flower bed a little bit for some shadow feels. Okay, that looks good and we'll also use our um, needle point brush we'll sap green raw umber a little bit of French ultramarine blue Just do a few, uh, not a lot, just a few here and there to give it that really nice feel of uh, wispy grasses and things. That looks good. And We can sharpen up some of the fence slats here and then I think we'll do um, purple, a little bit of French ultramarine blue and I'll do a little bit of shadow color, a little bit of raw umber too just to gray it down a little bit here and there. So this is very being very careful too. We're just dabbing some paint on there underneath that support board that's behind those white slats. We want to make sure we go every other. You can touch you can touch that in with pencil first a little bit if you want, just in case you go over one of the fence slats. You can erase it and then maybe get back on course again, but this this should be fine. That little bit of shadow under there, and then we could even go darker in a few spots. So we'll add purple, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber to get that darker color, and then you can just charge in here and there a little bit of a darker. Not on not on all of them, but just on a few, and the same under here too. Okay, things are coming along nicely. Um, let's use our round brush. We'll get some uh, black and we'll do some ivory black. And we'll do our light post. And we'll just carefully And we can even put that there. Then we dampen our brush, clean it off, dampen it. And we do that. Perfect. And then a little more. Light side is the right. The shadow side over here is the... Um, left. So we have uh, like 
that. And a little bit of light, a little bit of shadow on the left side of the glass. And then we can use our brush, our uh, needlepoint brush here to make this lighter side over here with more water, less water over here. So that's all you have to remember is when you're doing your light and shadows a lot of times, I know it, um, it can get uh, challenging. The thing is you just have to remember is um, on your dark side, your shadow side, you're just going to use more straight paint. And then when you're doing your light side where the light is coming from, you just you add a little bit of water to it and you make it watered down. You know, you water, you make the, the wash lighter by adding water to it. So straight paint, you would just dip straight into your paint with a damp brush for your darker tonal values. And then for your lighter tonal values, you would take some paint, put it on the palette and add a little bit of water to it. And then you get your lighter tone. That's all it is really. And um, that looks good. We can uh, also, if we want, this will look good. We will take a little bit of the ivory black and then the purple and blue mixture. And we'll just do a maybe a tiny bit of shadowing. Very light though, on the left side of these slats. Just a little bit of shadow. Maybe even a little bit of um, raw umber. And I rinse my brush and dampen it a little bit and just... Just a little bit though. Just ever so slightly. Just to give it a shadow. A little bit. So that the light you can... F you, it, it, re it looks better if we have that little bit of shadow on the left here. Like that. Okay, that looks good. Let's take a break. Um, it's always good to take breaks. So we did a lot here, actually. Um, let's take a break. We'll um, come back. We'll do the flowers here in the uh, bed in front of the fence. And maybe we'll try to maybe come up with an idea of maybe something additional uh, behind this fence here. Um, maybe a figure, maybe another tree or a bush or something like that. So we'll kind of let me think about it. Um, and we'll see uh, what we'll do. We might just leave it very simple like this. Um, but we'll make a decision and we'll maybe add something in. And maybe we'll just leave it like this. But we will add some more sky wash. We'll add some sky wash to this. At a minimum, we'll add some sky wash. We might leave it simple and just add a, some some blue and leave it leave it at that with, with the flowers, of course, and, and the uh, the beds here in the front. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, I kind of made a decision. I thought, let's add in a figure. Um, so I'm going to take the figure, and I'm figuring that the fence is about four feet. Um, so figures around six feet. So the figure should come to about here, the top of their head, average size person. And uh, I'm going to make a person with a hat. And Okay, that's simple enough, just, you know, a nice hat and uh, they might have on like a, um, 
a shawl on or something or a jacket. Maybe it's a little cooler out. Maybe it's a warm spring day, so maybe just like a jacket on, a light jacket, and the hat. And that looks pretty good. Okay, well, let's paint that in. Let's go with cadmium red. A little bit of burnt umber, kind of mix it down a little bit. And I'm remembering the lights coming from this way. I'll leave that lighter on that side and then maybe a little bit of blue for the shadow side. And then maybe some Maybe some raw sienna. And if you use the wrong color, that's not a problem. You can blot up a little bit of color and then go back in and get some more raw sienna. That looks good. And we'll use some raw umber and burnt umber for the hair. And a tiny bit of shadowing, purple, and under the hat. And the hat might be some raw umber over here. Just on the left side. Maybe a little bit of the shadow over here. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so we have a, a figure in there that's a little more interesting now. Makes it more interesting, has more of a story to it. Maybe there's someone here and they're, they're waiting for uh, someone to meet somebody or um, they're just here looking at the beautiful flowers and the uh, park-like setting. Now we'll um, do our, some Flowers, let's do some cadmium red. Here I'm going to I will do spotty colors, like I'm not going to do all bunchings of, of colors. I'm going to do intermittent flower colors all the way around different sizes and different shapes and in different locations and then I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to alizarin and crimson and I'll just do a little bit of lizard and crimson flowers a little bit of a change in color Then I'll use my needlepoint brush. We'll do some orange flowers. We'll do some yellow too as well. And so I'm trying to go for some really nice variety of colors. And 
And let's do maybe some purple flowers too. Different shapes. This, these are a couple different shapes of things. Uh, splashes, a couple splashes. And I think some yellow, cadmium lemon yellow. Plenty of color. A little bit of olive green. And if you add some color and you don't think it looks good, just blot it up with a tissue. I'm just going to add some color here. Some sh uh, shadows, purple. Okay, good, and then I'm not going to overdo it. Just a little bit of color in the sky color here, uh, cerulean blue. And the sky color, I always like to just scrub on that wash. Nothing too fancy. And we'll do some sky color here. And that little bit of sky color is And I carefully go around the figure here. And the light, very carefully go around the light. So we let that light post and the fence and the figure dry really well before we go around it with the sky wash. That looks pretty good. So there we have it. A, a gorgeous, beautiful spring scene. Springtime, beautiful flowers. Um, you know, we can add in a little more um, greens, maybe. You know, just to... But there's a point where you just have to really... That looks good. I don't want to go too much, too busy in that area. It's got a lot of flowers there, so that's really colorful. Looks interesting. 
and uh, maybe the figure we can use a little bit of shadowing burnt umber and uh, raw, uh, burnt umber and, and French ultramarine blue just underneath the hat a little bit so there's like a shadow there And then a little bit of warmth, a little bit of warmth on the left side um, for flesh color. So we have uh, cadmium red and a little bit of yellow ochre. And that is good. Uh, we could do a little more. Sometimes you can darken up a little bit of uh, areas to give it more um, excitement. But that looks pretty good. I hope you like this uh, painting, this small composition. And then you can always frame it. You can do it larger. This is small. This is maybe like an 8x8. Eight eight. Um, you can mat it. So you can do something like that. Um, you can get a smaller mat and do something like this. So once you do something like in a vignette style, then you can drop over mats on top of it and, and get different different looks. And there's different size mats and you can just, you know, be creative, you know, and see what, what looks good. And maybe I'll just peel off the tape. That might look a little better. Sometimes the tape looks a little bit, uh, doesn't look the greatest when I have all the markings and the magic marker on there. But I definitely think that's important to try to lay out your painting and get your markings on the um, tape. And And of course we saw the painting in the beginning. Um, we can zoom in one more time. And that looks pretty good. Very simple composition, painting. Um, hopefully this is something again that um, you'll try a couple times do different things. Maybe um, no, maybe a fence isn't a great idea. Maybe just the flowers and and the uh, the figure um, with the light post possibly. Or um, I just I say be creative, have fun with it, enjoy, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.